Science-based lifting has been taken over by one of the most scientifically established exercises in a sweep, except it is represented in the opposite way. Welcome to the show, Dumbbell Pullover. But before we dig into the vice, we need to talk about what it means to be science-based by getting the definition of science. The systematic study of the structure and behavior of the physical and natural world through observation, experimentation and testing of theories against the evidence obtained. And you are probably wondering why I read this line, it's because you are basing your lifting on this. Testing our theories against the evidence we have. Remember this line. Super important. I should probably tattoo it on my forehead. Currently everybody is talking about the length and portions, the new syphilis of fitness and the classic came up. The dumbbell pullover. I mainly know it from seeing a picture of Arnold doing it and you may as well. Probably. You also heard that it is good for expanding your chest. Not true, but you can't blame Arnie. At that time, science wasn't really developed enough. We will touch on the length and partials in the next video, but right now, let's take a look at the infamous dumbbell pullover. Why is it misrepresented? Why is it bastardized? And what the actual science says repeatedly. As you descend with the dumbbell, you are stretching your lats, chest and triceps. All three of them. And as you come up, you are mainly targeting your lats. And if you turn your elbows in, you are targeting your chest more is how it is represented to you wrongly. What is actually happening? As you descend with the dumbbell, you are actively stretching the lats till around 90 to 120 degree. Above that, it is inactive stretching, meaning they won't generate force, nor get any kind of stimulus to grow because it is inactive. Your chest and triceps are actively stretching above those degrees where they take over. This is easily explained by neuromechanical matching and where the muscles have leverage. Neuromechanical matching is moving activation from one muscle to another as they lose and gain leverage. And it makes sense in an efficiency standpoint, at least to me and to you by the end of this video. Unfortunately, by rotating your elbows in and out, you are not changing anything. You are just putting yourself in an unnatural, uncomfortable position and your body will signal to you pain and discomfort and you are not changing the biomechanics of the exercise nor where the muscles have leverages. But why did I say that it is shown repeatedly in science literature? It's because it is. A study from March 18, 2011 compared muscle activation of the pecs and lats in a barbell pullover and found that the barbell pullover emphasized the chest significantly more than the lats and it makes sense. Burgess and his colleagues in 2018 compared the triceps, pecs and lats in pullover, pull down and bench press and triceps extension. What is shocking is that even in the concentric phase the pecs had the most activity followed by triceps and the lats barely had anything and that makes sense if you remember where the muscles have leverages and where the resistance profile is or where the exercise is the hardest with normal terms. And even in the eccentric phase you see the same thing happening where you have barely any tension on you is where the lats have any leverage and as you get a big stretch you are only actively stretching the pecs and the triceps and that is also the reason why the triceps lying extension had the same activity for the lats as the pullover. And the findings are aligning with this. Now this doesn't mean that there is no lats at all. It just means that it is awful for building it. This is not the worst part. The worst part is the science-based community that forgot to do science. Except with the dumbbell, you have much more tension on your lats at the bottom and very little tension at the top. Now, this isn't such a bad thing though, because the stretch is most likely the most anabolic part of the range of motion anyway. It immediately makes the exercise more challenging throughout the final portions of the range of motion without dropping off a huge amount of the stretch. Now, I believe that the biggest problem is that exercise science is broadly disconnected from physiology and biomechanics as a whole. Now, I'm not an exercise scientist, I studied muscle physiology, so I had to learn everything outside of that and then make the connection. But it seems like exercise science they don't do that, they just do exercise science and uh, ignore human physiology as a whole. I don't even want to talk about biomechanics because, let's be honest, physics sucks. Like Even in elementary school, physics sucked. And on top of that, some of the people are even abusing their titles to say that it is a legit exercise for building the lats when it has been repeatedly shown that it's not. Another way to emphasize that stretch is to pick certain movements over other movements. In this case, if you did a cable pullover, like a cable lat prayer, you would get a great stimulus. You know, it's a full range of motion for the lats, 
a lot of shoulder extension, but the resistance curve is relatively even. You're still training the shortened position, and that's all well and good, that's your goal. However, with certain movements like the dumbbell pullover, by design, it is already a lengthened partial. Even if you wanted to, if you go past here, there's no more resistance. So you're only training in that stretched lengthened position. Even more than that, the hardest part of the lift, the place where you have to produce the most tension in your lats, is in that bottom position at long muscle lengths. And then it gets easier and easier linearly until you get to that top position. So the resistance profile is not even remotely even. The exercise is the hardest around the mid position because it is following a bear shaped curve. The top is an unloaded stretch. The bottom is a back off. And around mid range is where you have the most tension on you. And that's also where the lats have the best leverage making this exercise way, way better than the pullover. And he's right about the stretch, but this is not an active stretch. That is why people are using the term active range of motion. This is a passive stretch and a muscle has to be active in order to experience passive tension and active tension in order to grow. Just like you can't sit and grow your glutes. Otherwise office workers would walk around with massive asses. But let's be honest, they are complaining about the opposite, which is also a myth, the glute amnesia. I also see some solutions like pushing your hip lower down, but that just shows how little you understand about what is happening at the exercise. The exercise is revolving around your shoulders, not at your hips. You don't change where it is the hardest and the leverages of your muscles. Putting yourself in a bridge is going to change this exercise because you are changing what's happening at your shoulder. But if you are in a gym setting, then you don't have to put yourself into these positions because you have the option to do better, at least to pick better exercises. The best way to actively stretch them is by any seated rowing where your arms are around 90 degrees. So if you dusted off this exercise because you saw it from someone else, then it is time for you to put it back into the corner of the room and let it be a dust collector again. Instead, do seated rowing, lat pull downs, pull ups and any variations of these exercises progressively overloading and your lats are going to grow. Don't forget to buy my online coaching, like, subscribe, hit the bell. Talk to you in the next one.